this is like the perfect case to, to talk about the five parts of evidence or the forms of evidence. I mean, we have this forensic evidence that's going on, the bicycle crash, uh, the, the forensics on the bicycle or the items that are recovered. We have eyewitness information that, that uh, may or may not be reliable. We have circumstantial evidence in this case that's really becoming intriguing. But as we explore all these forms of evidence, one thing that we do know is that a single form of evidence is not really valuable in court. There are anomalies in cases where a single form has been what was used to convict someone. Uh, and oftentimes that boils down to like an eyewitness testimony. But eyewitness testimony, this other form of evidence, is, is so un, unbelievably untrustworthy at times that we have to really be careful that we're using multiple forms of evidence. We have a, a video that we posted a short time ago that talks about those forms of evidence. But then again, the most, uh, the newest form and the, one of those that can really lend a lot of credibility one way or another is this idea of behavioral evidence. And uh, as you talk about this person that we're, we've been talking about, I want to just play on the screen now um, the uh, statement that he made uh, in the media. On, and I believe it was on his Facebook page, wasn't it, Chris? Yeah. Oh, Suzanne, if anyone is out there that can hear this, that has you, please, we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you. No questions asked. However much they want, I will do whatever it takes to get you back. Honey, I love you. You know, um, I, I just found that interesting. I'm certainly not an expert in, in uh, body language. I do understand some nonverbal cues, but... On crime stories with Nancy Grace, uh, did you did you catch that session she did the other night where she had the body language expert Suzanne Constantine on the call with her? Did you catch that one, Chris? I saw it. Yeah, I listened to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, did you did you catch what she was saying? She she says, well, well, she begins with saying that she's really troubled by his words, "Oh, Suzanne," uh, and she indicates, you know, usually when someone says, "Oh." There's uh, usually some really strong emotion with it. Perhaps it's fear, uh, maybe some sympathy behind it. She just felt like it was kind of an odd way to open up. And then, and then she talks about his use of the word if. If you can find her, if she's out there. Those kinds of things really struck her as being odd. Uh, Constantine went on to mention several other things that bothered her. But the final statement, uh, if I remember right, I love you and I miss you. Uh, she, she felt that his voice inflections were flat and monotone. It really caused her to, to question his truthfulness. I, I don't know. What, what, what did you think when you saw that? Well, you know, the first thing that, that catches me, the viewer of that particular just statement in and of itself is immediately struck with an emotional response because you have the victim uh, you know, on the side of him. So immediately you, you, the thought process is pulled into an emotional response to her. Okay? So no matter what he says, okay, you're gonna, people are gonna measure it against what they're looking at for her. Okay, so meaning you know, if you kind of play it back for just a second here, you'll see. Yeah, I'm, just gonna, kind of, I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to get to that. I'm having a little yeah, bit of a tough no time right here. There we go. So you're saying this part right yeah. here. Where the, yeah. yeah, I mean, okay, so there she is, okay? So everybody is looking at her going, wow, okay? There's the victim, you know? They're, they're saying, wow, she just looks like, you know, she is your everyday girl, yeah. okay? And now... So he must be the monster. Okay, so let's listen what the monster says. Okay, and so that you you get these people that approach this stuff sometimes where they go, well, no matter what he says, okay, I'm going to listen to every single minutial, you know, piece of 
the puzzle here and hear things that, you know, just, you know, the tone, the, the whatever, okay, uh, that's great. But what's more important is we now have evidence, i.e. Tyson's tape. What are the correlating statements to what Tyson picked up? And that word if, which the uh, Nancy's gal said, that's critical, okay? Because he also says in that statement, if somebody, if, uh, uh, if uh, anyone other than, okay? So he uses that, um, you know, and he pushes it to the other direction to using that, you know, word. He starts talking in plurals. Uh, and this goes back to the conversation about the cat, you know, they, we, them. So he's kind of, you know, moving himself away from, uh, you know, first person, which could be an indication of deception. Or it could be he's just a distraught husband who's been through the ringer uh, looking for his wife for the, you know, the duration of what just took place there. You know, yeah. And the evidence at that point will become significant based on, you know, the old saying, right? You know, the um, open mouth, insert foot. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for uh, listening in today. You know, we're really new at this and we're trying to give you content that makes sense. And thanks for giving us a shot. I hope that we can do things that make sense to you. So until we get together next time, thanks a lot and uh, have a great day.